welcome back darlings. This week's video I'm doing this lovely little mini for an enhancement and coating package. Now as you can see it's not in that bad a condition, it's just got a bit of general love marks really. Um, so all I'm going to do is make it look the best it possibly can. It's going to be one for the purists though, there's a lot of polishing and there's coating in it. But uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing as I go through and hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks very much, see you at the end. Now let's get these wheels sorted. They were probably the worst bit of the car actually, so I'm giving them a pre-wash soak with the built hamber auto foam, 4% PIR, getting it all inside the rim and inside the wheel arch and letting that dwell for about four minutes or so while I get the other bits ready. Then giving it a good rinse out inside the arch first and I'm switching over to the easy go brush. You see I'm rinsing it out here. I'm using the black detergent spreading nozzle on the um, pressure washer. I'm not dunking it back inside the bucket because I don't want to make my wheel cleaning bucket really dirty. Then going on to the tire, I'm using CarPro Retire. Really, really effective. I've got an upcoming test of uh, different products for cleaning the tires. There's gonna be six different products in that, so look forward to that one. And I'm using, I'm, what am I using? I'm using uh, Detail Bug Black Widow, the acidic wheel cleaner there. And I'm doing that for the very good reason that on gloss black, I want to scrub it as little as possible. And I can see, and you can see from that picture earlier, there's some quite, quite ingrained brake dust. In fact, these wheels were the, the dirtiest part of the car. So I um, I used a city wheel cleaner just to get rid of that as quickly as possible with as little rubbing as possible and therefore as little marring as possible. Now, I always play it safe with an acidic wheel cleaner and I put it on for two minutes to start with and found that it didn't shift everything. So uh, I did put it on again and I did all the rest of the sides with a four minute dwell and they came up absolutely fine. So no problems there, but play it safe the first wheel so you can get a bit of a test, a bit like doing a test spot on the rest of the car. Now, for, in terms of wash, I've foamed with Built Hammer Alls. I foam over the rest of the car, 4% BIR and then I'm washing with um, Meguiar's Wash Plus. It's a good decon shampoo, you know, it helps shift off as much as the muck as possible before you then do the other sorts of decontamination, which in this case we're using some Corosol. Pump spray to put that on is much, much easier because your hand doesn't get so tired from using a pump bottle, you know, a traditional trigger spray. I found I get like pretty tired hands by trying to do an entire car. Pump spray makes that a lot easier. Um, you could say similarly, you could do the same thing when you're using your tar remover as well. Uh, there's a bit of fallout, as you can see here. Not loads. It's a year old car. You know, it shouldn't have loads on anyway, um, but it isn't in bad condition. But anything is good to remove this. Talking of removing, I'm now rinsing off the Corosol using the high pressure 40 degree nozzle to start with. Then I'm going to switch over to the black detergent rinsing one. And that's just to flood the panel as much as possible to get as much out quick rough towel dry before applying my tar and glue remover. In this case, it is the detail bug tar and glue. That's really, really good. I think it's bug off, I think it's called. Um, it's really effective. It's as good as the old formulation of TARDIS. Um, the new formulation isn't anywhere near as good, I find. So once the, that's all done, I'm gonna spray on Surface HD at 10% and give that a rinse off because that removes any of the tar remover, which dissolves the clay. So I want to get that off before I clay. I just got to the point that it's claying time. I'm going to use something that's a bit different. This time I'm using this one from Detail Bug. Now, why is this different? Well, it has got two different grades of um, clay in there. The white one is the fine and the purple is the medium, nicely on brand. And when I was talking to Rachel at um, Wax Stock, yep, <laughs> uh, she said the purple medium is probably very similar to the uh, Built Hamber Fine, which is their white one. But it, that is known to be a more aggressive clay. So I'm going to go with the white on this one. It's pretty smooth. The instructions on this are great. It tells you, you know, that you, that if you want to use a different um, clays, whites for fine, the paint is semi smooth, purple is heavy, and the paint's pretty rough. So break a chunk off, give it a crack. And for the clay lube, I'm using ONR at 1 to 16. the claying's all done now giving it a rinse off and a final dry now before I take it inside 
So first off, I'll start with the big towel. That is the Hydro Hoover XXL from Details United. That's available on Amazon and the link below to that if you want it. Then I'm going and blowing out uh, and using all the tight gaps to get rid of all the track water. I'm using probably my least favorite drying towel there, which is the Rag Company Liquidator. Really ineffective, but it's the smallest one that I've got and it's great for using it as a catcher for the drips that are running out. You don't really want to have to blow it around the panel because then you've made more mess. It's best to try and blow it into a cloth and dry it straight away. So I'm just showing you all the different places that I tend to use the uh, pet dryer as the blower for the car here and all the places where you typically get the most trap water. And you want to get that trap water out before you start polishing because if you the vibration from the polisher will make it drip down and dilute your polish. And when I'm doing all of that, you can see I've been taping up the car and now we're doing a bit of an inspection. Oh, yeah. Wilder's got some swells on. Yeah, hazing, but not too much on here, I think. Let's bring you in with the inspection light. Let's see what that does. The hazing, nothing too bad, though. This, these vinyls are going to need a bit. So the bonnet wasn't too bad and neither is the door but this is probably the best example of the sort of marring we've got going on here. This is sort of love marks that you get from general washing. So I'm going to give it a go with um, S20 black on the Rupes yellow and the yellow foam that is and the force rotation polisher from Inter Detailing. First we're going to do this test spot and we'll see how we get on there. All right, so the polish is looking completely broken down. So I'm now wiping it off using uh, Fenlab Pure Rinses at one to 250. That's way better than ONR um, because it emulsifies the oils in the, the polishes way better, way better. I think you could coat almost after this, it's that effective. And I'm using a couple of the interdetailing towels, one that's in the bucket to get wet and the other one is a dry one to just buff off and inspect the paint. So I'm pretty happy. Let me show you what I can see. So the left hand side is corrected, the right hand side isn't. Now for a single stage, one step enhancement detail, these results are absolutely incredible. It helps that it wasn't that bad to start with, but the results are brilliant. That's some brilliant clarity right there. So I'm really pleased with the results I'm getting. And now I'm gonna just do the uh, the whole car. Well, all of the green paint anyway. we come back to the, uh, the black bits later on. And I'm gonna use the force rotation all the way through. And what I particularly like, and you can see in these clips, is it lets you do the big areas of the panel, but also I can do the edge work. So I don't need to switch from one machine to another to do like, the bits where the panel curves, where you kind of get a smaller contact patch because I can push down on the pad and therefore keep the rotating and cover a larger area. That's where this is really good. It's similar to a rotary in that respect, but I get a better finish. However, what I'm gonna give you now is a quick snippet of some real time polishing. So you get an idea of just how slow it is and why it takes two days to do this car. So after a couple of sets, I like to wash the pad out and I use the Lake Country pad washer. I think this is brilliant. I've got an airline and I think this thing gets it far cleaner than blowing the pads out. If you're using fibrous pads like wool or microfiber, you may want to give them a blowout between the sets, but ultimately you're still going to need to wash them. But you can see I'm no longer on the forced rotation and that's because that thing doesn't spin fast enough to dry the pads through centrifugal force. So I switched it over to the DA15 here and that's purely because I had that one out with um, the five inch backing plate so I can swap the pad over. Now the pad's nice and clean, onto some more polishing. And this is the roof. Now it's a different type of paint, but it is still a metal roof.
So these are the results I got on the roof. Bearing in mind this is just four passes of S20 black. Night and day difference. And this is part of the reason I'd never get a black car because this happens a lot. Um, you really see any marks. I had a black car in the past, never going again. Now we're looking at the, the uh, gloss back pillars. These are plastic, not metal. So I'm giving it a go with S20 black on the force rotation and um, with the Rupes yellow again, same combination. But you can see the results I'm getting in a minute are hazy. So I'm gonna have to try something different. And later on, you'll see that I try the uh, DA8 with the three inch yellow foam pad and um, uh, S20 black originally. And I'll try a few other bits, but I'll talk about those when I get to it. micro mario on the plastic so come back with the uh, three inch pad on that later now due to the awkward shape of the mirror cap i'm still using the force rotation but i'm still using s20 black here when i come back with that polisher again a little in a minute i'm using it with a lower grade polish i think i was using mcguire's 205 at that point um, and i'm going to use the little nano polisher now with the microfiber pad on it uh, to kind of get in a bit deeper into those scratches the reason I'm using the force rotation on this is uh, anything else stalls out really easily and I found with the 205 I was not leaving a hazy result, so that worked. Great example here with that contour panel of just how flexible the force rotation machine is. That's still the 5 inch pad and I'm able to get into all of those contours and grooves. Really a time saver, you don't have to swap around from different sized machines as often. looking forward to doing the bonnet and this is why the results i'm getting around the rest of the car are great it's worked out really well here as well you see that that clarity on the bonnet there is really really good from a single pass anyway those were the results in the bonnet that was easy i had to get back to these gloss black plastic pillars and i'm starting off with the da8 with the three inch pad rupes yellow foam still and s20 black still i'm not completely happy with the level of uh, haziness left behind. It's not as severe as it was on that rear one with the forced rotation, but it's still not as clear as I wanted. So I need to try something else. All right, and that's a little bit hazy. So I'm gonna try some 3D1 instead. It's a bit of a milder compound. A plastic soft, very soft. Nice, well that's what we're going to do on the others. Now I'm leaving this to the last, the boot here is the most, probably the most intricate area on this car, and it is on a lot of cars as well. So I'm doing as much as I can with the fourth rotation DA with the five inch pad, but I will eventually have to switch over to the DA8 with the three inch pad. And I've said in previous videos, I find the DA8 to be better than the DA12 as a three inch machine as it's more powerful and doesn't stall out as much. But it's about the same size, weighs about the same, super flexible. There's a link up to the video there of my initial comparison between the different inter-detailing polishers, and there's gonna be a further one coming up now I've had a load more time on all of the machines. All right, so now I'm coating with Synergy 2, Infinity Wax Synergy 2. I've done a panel prep has been done with Infinity Wax Synergy Prep, and I'm using the Rag Company Pearl applicator to apply the coating. I'm using that instead of the bundled one because uh, I wanted to give them a go. I bought them ages ago, but they're barrier applicators, which means there's like a, a membrane, like a plastic membrane under the um, microfiber exterior, which stops it all soaking into the foam in the middle. So you use less product, and I genuinely believe that it's true. I use less product to coat this car than I have on previous minis. And I'm leveling it there with a warp knit into detailing cloth and I'm doing the final buff off there with the 350 GSM edgeless. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm really happy with the results I got from this. 
you see in a minute in the afters, the gloss is off the charts. The plastics look really black as well. They're coated with geo and trim. I didn't have any footage of it. Um, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.